This is the presidential portrait of Harry S. Truman, the 33rd president of the United States, painted by Greta Kempton in 1947. And there is a lot to know about this painting. A, a lot to know. I, I've done way too much research just for this painting. It's kind of ridiculous. So to begin, there are basically three sources of knowledge about the painter Greta Kempton. The first is an interview she did, which has been transcribed. You can read it online. The second is the Kempton Foundation. This is the source of most articles you'll see about her online. It was founded by Wesley Jakinski, who has a massive personal collection of her paintings and things about her life. And the website is down. Um, all you can find are snapshots on the Wayback Machine. The third is auction websites. That's where half my photos come from. They're very low resolution and you have to be a member to know what they sell for. So I don't even know how much her stuff is worth. So about the Truman painting, from her interview at least, we know that she is a big fan of using clouds to frame the faces of her portraits. And you can see it here. On the left side, there are like these dark clouds with orange tinges. Kind of looks like something out of a battlefield. We'll get to that in like two seconds. In the front of him, you can see the clouds lighten and they part up of the capital. Now, this dichotomy of left side all dark, right side very light is not common in her paintings. And I only found it one other place, which is her portrait of a soldier, which makes sense because of the dark war-torn past. And, of course, Truman is no stranger to that because he was the man who had to decide to drop the nuclear bombs. He also fought in World War I. There's a story behind that, too. And then there's the Capitol building. This is actually the third of the then 33 presidential portraits to include the Capitol building. The first, it was far in the background. The second, it was actually on equal level with the president. Um, that was Warren G. Harding's portrait, and it's most likely a metaphor for the balancing of executive and legislative powers. But of course, here, Truman is towering above the Capitol building. It is kind of like a reflection of Herbert Hoover's portraits, uh, where he's sitting next to the globe. It's an expression of power, really more about the uh, position of the president than the individual in the portrait. And that fiction kind of runs through the entire painting. I mean, here you see Truman sitting up straight, his posture is wide. He's looking directly at the viewer. I mean, we're talking about a man who had a fear of public speaking and spent half his speeches looking down at cue cards. So, you know, it's not entirely truthful, but there are human elements to it. You've got his wedding ring. Um, he was married to his childhood sweetheart. You have his pin. Oh my God, the pin. You have no idea how long I spent trying to figure out what that pin was. At first, I thought it was a gold star lapel pin you know, because it is a gold star lapel pin um, as a literal sense. But the gold star lapel pin is a pin given to the family members of those who were killed in action. Also, because in 1947, when this was painted, Congress officially made the gold star lapel pin um, something issued by the military rather than just a tradition outside of it. And it turns out that's not what it is. He wore the pin before that. Also, Truman never had any immediate family members killed in action. My second theory was that it's something he got awarded as part of his involvement in the military. Uh, he did get an Armed Forces Reserve Medal, not until after 1950 though, because that's when they started giving them out. Then there was the World War I Victory Medal, which looks like this, so not quite what I was after. And then I got a lead because there was an Observer article and I'm going to quote it here. Truman wore a Masonic pin, which would launch a million conspiracy theories today. So was this a Freemason pin? Well, I found a Freemason website that spoke specifically about Truman. So let's look here. His sister, Mary Jane, was very active in the Order of the Eastern Star in Grandview and in Missouri, serving as the worthy grand matron of the state in 1950. President Truman was an honored guest at her installation. It has nothing to do with an Eastern Star. Uh, I couldn't find anything. Next, Truman was created a noble of the mystic shrine. Now I did find a pin associated with that title that had a gold star, but it also had a lot of other weird stuff. It, it's not that. So while I was on this wild Freemason goose chase, I was actually talking with someone about this on Discord and they sent me this link. I circled all the way back around to the World War I victory medal. This page speaks to the ribbon and to the medal, but it has a picture of the pin, and this is the pin he's wearing, but it's not over yet 
because there's a color problem. You see, I know for sure that there is a gold pin, or should I say bronze pin, that he definitely has worn because you can see it in both of his portraits, which were done at the time in color. Now, all other photos of him, of course, are in black and white, but a few have been colorized, and a few of those colorized photos show a silver lapel button. Now the question becomes, did he have two buttons? Because, you know, maybe the people who colorized those photos know something I don't. So I looked into it. And there is a silver version of this pin. But I'm going to an official source right here. Let us quote, Code of Federal Regulations, Title 32, Section 578.63, on lapel buttons, Part D. World War I Victory Button, a five-pointed star, five-eighths inch in diameter, on a wreath with the letters U.S. in the center. For persons wounded in action, the lapel button is silver. For all others, the lapel button is bronze. And there you have it. The Wikipedia photo for Harry S. Truman is wrong. The button is not silver. It is bronze. So let's move on to another human element. His eyes. And glasses and to a lesser extent his gray hair. You see, when World War I rolled around, he was actually too old for the draft. Uh, he applied anyways, and he had to memorize all of the letters on the eye chart because, of course, he was legally blind in his left eye and just generally had terrible eyesight. So those eyes, with all their wrinkles, probably caused by years of squinting like I am right now because I'm not wearing my glasses, are part of his story. And two years previous to this painting, J. Wesley Jacobs actually painted Truman and left out a lot of the wrinkles around his eyes. Truman thought that this portrait was a little too flattering. Now, when Greta Kempton painted him, well, she was a big fan of Rembrandt, so of course all the characteristic wrinkles got to stay. So there you have it. There are some fictional elements, some human elements, and they all blend together to make something that's kind of nice. God, I can finally see now.